Mr. Haas, I have a question yes, for Mr. you. All right. Do you think this function is continuous? I don't know. I mean, it's not always so obvious. It's not always so obvious. So let's think about when do we have, what are kind of our main ways for a function to not be continuous? Well, piecewise functions okay. are often Okay, piecewise functions, because piecewise functions often give you a jump. I, I don't think we're going to get a Probably jump. Not. Okay, what's another way you can have a discontinuity? Well, I mean, you could have a vertical asymptote somewhere. Okay, there is another classic. You could have a vertical asymptote. Is this going to have an asymptote? I don't think so. No, because what creates vertical asymptotes? Well, you need a zero in the I'm sorry, Mike, should I be answering yes. those questions? Okay. You need, you need a zero, you need a zero in, the in the denominator. denominator. Okay. And what's another, what's the other kind of classic? You have a hole in your function, a removable discontinuity. Yes. Removable discontinuity, discontinuity which also comes from? A denominator. A denominator. So this is going to be continuous. It, it, can't possibly fit any of these, ah, right? Yes, that's and right. if you think about it, that's just a, you know, the fifth root of something to the sixth. It, it, it's going to look weird, but there aren't going to be any holes. So this is definitely continuous. Now, if I wanted to ask if it's differentiable, that means the derivative has to exist everywhere. Well, what would be a good way to figure that out? Well, you could take the derivative. Let's take the derivative and look at the derivative. Exactly right. 6 fifths times x minus 2 to the 1 fifth minus 5. Sure, a little chain rule action there. Little That's chain good. rule. Okay, right. now, now I'm going to kind of do the same analysis. Are there any problems with the derivative? Is Looking the derivative continuous? I'm going to say yes. Yeah. This is a positive exponent, so nothing's being shifted into the denominator. I think I could plug in any x value I want. So the derivative is continuous. In other words, it exists for all x. That means that the original function must also be differentiable. Does that make sense? What do you think about this function? Do you think this function is continuous? Well, let's see. Is is uh, let's follow the the rules that you talked about last time. Is yeah. It, is it a piecewise function with any jumps in it? No. No. Uh, does it have a denominator where uh, that you could set to zero? No. I'm going to say no. So yeah, I'm yeah. going to say yes. It's continuous. Yeah. And in fact, most functions in the form 1 over n, where, you know, that's just a natural number, those are going to be continuous. Most functions that we meet are continuous, really, except for when you have a rational function with a denominator or a piecewise function, things like that. Now, you can get into some kooky functions later on, that, uh, but most of our normal functions that we're looking at, if there's not a denominator, if it's not a piecewise, it's probably going to be continuous. Right. I think it's a, perhaps sometimes students get fractional exponents mixed up with negative exponents. Ah, Is that a possibility? Yeah, I don't know. that could be. I mean, if, if you had a negative exponent there. Well, right. we're right. going to get there. Oh, so okay. let's take the derivative. Yeah, let's do it. See if it's differentiable. All right, just a little power rule action here. I'm going to subtract 1. Ooh, do you see what I see, Mr. Haas? I do. Okay. What is that negative exponent doing? Yeah, you're going to have an x in the denominator there, of course. That's going to give me an x in the denominator, which means right away I'm going to have a problem. I think you're missing an 11 there, but uh, the not negative 9 over 11 in the front of your coefficient there. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to have a problem when x equals 0 in this case. So. This original function would be non-differentiable at x equals 0 because the derivative does not exist at 0. All right. How do we feel? Yeah, it's good. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Haas.